Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina. Just a little talk with Jesus. I want to talk to you tonight about this prayer stuff. Uh, the prospering, prospering power of, of prayer. Uh, Matthew chapter 9, trying to find it myself. <coughs> chapter 7, chapter 9, verse 14, please. Hope you have your Bible where you can follow me in the scriptures. We're going to look at this. The teaching of our Lord actually begins in verse 14. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? These were two or a few of the disciples of John. John's in prison now. The disciples are coming to our Lord and talked about how the Pharisees fast. The Pharisees fasted two days a week, usually Tuesdays and Thursdays. They're questioning Lord, our Lord now, about his disciples and their prayer life. And Jesus said unto them, can the children of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. Now we're, watch this next verse, please, with me in your Bible. No man putting or putteth a piece of new cloth onto an old garment. The new cloth here is the new covenant. And the old garment is the old covenant. Now, Jesus here is introducing the disciples of John as well as his own disciples to the new covenant. It's going to be very unusual for them to hear and to receive some things that our Lord's going to say. He said, no man putteth a piece of new cloth onto an old garment. For that which is put in it to fill it up taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. What God is trying to say through our Lord is, the old covenant was viewed as an imperfect and very temporary. It wasn't given to last, it was given to the Jew, not to the believer. To go back, to revert back to the law, will actually worsen the situation. Thank God for grace. I pray you stay under that grace, because when you try to wiggle your way back to the law, the situation you're in is actually going to get worse, because there's nothing back there in the law that can help you. Can you see me? Verse 17 says, Neither do men put new wine into new into old bottles. Even the bottles break, the wine runs out, the bottles perish, but they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. The new wine skin is the new covenant, and those that are, of course, in Christ. The new wine is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a symbol, or wine is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit dwelling now in these new, newborn or renewed people. Uh, John chapter 6, well, John chapter 8, you're close by. Let's look at a verse here. John chapter 8. When we talk about prayer or we talk about truth, uh, Jesus had some encounters with some men here in this 8th chapter. And... Uh, Notice, if you will, in verse 30, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Are you following me in the Bible now? Then said Jesus to those Jews 
which believed on him, if you continue. Would you use the word continue, please? If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples. Notice the word indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I always ask, free from what? How has the truth helped you in your Christian life? Free from what? I had a person the other week tell me, they've been attending another church, and said, uh, we were losing our faith there. And said, uh, we came back because we like you and our faith is built up when we hear you teach. There are places today that will actually steal your faith instead of build it up. But here our Lord talks about discipleship. He talks about following him. He talks about continuing in this stuff. Notice, if you will, verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So he says, truth shall make you free. And he says, you shall be free indeed. How free does God want you to be? You ever think about that? How free does God want you to be? And I can ask you, how free are you today? How's this freedom thing working out for you? I heard uh, uh, one of the preachers in Dallas, Texas, uh, talk about having get free services. He said they've been having about one a month. But said he wondered how many you have to have before somebody gets free. He said nobody's ever getting free. So how many get free services do you go to before you get free? See, it's not the services that make you free. It's the truth that makes you free. Pack, pass it another step. It's the truth you know that will set you free. So when I ask you how free do you think God wants you to be, you see here he said the truth, you shall be free indeed. The word indeed is found another place, and it's, it's in our resurrection season that we're in. The Lord has risen indeed, the Bible says. The Lord has risen indeed. And the Bible said here, you shall be free indeed. So just as free as Jesus was after his resurrection, that's how free we should be. I think he was pretty free. And that's how God wants us to be, free. Say, I'm free. I am free. I'd like to encourage you, as I continue in this, I'd like to encourage you to announce your freedom from anything that's holding you back. You know, it's hard to get people to say anything today. Anything you see holding you back, why don't you just start announcing, bless God, I'm getting free of that. Amen. Jesus is setting me free of that. I shall be free indeed. I shall be free. How many of you know nothing is permanent? Amen. Nothing is permanent. I don't care what the physician has told you. It's not permanent. I don't care about the relationship you're in. It doesn't have to be permanent. You need to start announcing. Praise God, I'll tell you what. I've endured this for a while, but thank God I am coming out. I'm going to be free of this. I don't care what it is, just get free of it. Quit dragging that luggage around with you. All that baggage around. I know folks that's been sick all their life. If you took sickness away from them, they wouldn't know what to do. I know preachers, the only thing they talk about is the devil. If you took all the scriptures about the devil away from them, they wouldn't have anything to preach about. Isn't it amazing what we hear? I'm telling you, Jesus Christ came to set you free. Amen. Free from what? Free, free from anything that's holding you in bondage. We should be free. Amen. We should be the first church of the free. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Nothing is permanent. Would you just say that? Nothing is permanent. No, say it again. Nothing is permanent. Now say it like you believe it. Nothing is permanent. So get ready. 
Get ready to get rid of it. We don't look at the things that are seen. We look at the things, we look at the things that are not seen. The things that are seen are just temporary. They can be changed. Anything you're going through today can be changed. Can you say amen? amen. There, why don't you just say things are about to change in my life? Tell the person beside of you that. <laughs> Praise God, this could be your moment. This could be your day. This could be your day for a miracle. This could be your day to get free of all of that mess that's been holding you back. Shake it off. Get free of it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. I'll tell you, God can turn any situation around. I believe this is your time. The and when we get into the new covenant, Jesus talked about this new covenant. We, I think, taught you one time about the difference between the way John's disciples prayed and the way Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray. And the disciples of Jesus had been looking at the disciples of John. And their prayer life, of course, was based out of the Pharisees and their traditions, which means they prayed real loud and they prayed real long. And they'd see Jesus in his prayer life when he didn't do a lot of praying in public. He'd just speak something and it'd be done. And the disciples of John could not understand how all of these things were working out in the life of our Lord. And they couldn't understand why he wasn't teaching his disciples that they need to be fasting at least two days a week like the Jews. So Jesus talked about the old garment and the new garment. He talked about the new wine and he talked about the old wine. In the new covenant, there are some things the believers are free from. The biggie is we're free from the works of the law. <laughs> you don't understand how big that really is until you go back and study the law and you find out, praise God, I'm free from the works of the law. I'm also free from the curse of the law. What a biggie that is. I'm free from the curse of the law. When you get into uh, chapter 28 of, of Deuteronomy, and we'll be going there in just a moment, you see a couple of things listed there. You'll see the blessings and you'll see the cursings. But see, before I read the 28th chapter, I want to show you a verse in Galatians chapter 3 to get you primed uh, before you go there and help you to understand why we try to talk a little bit about freedom to you and try to get you moving in that direction and away from this other direction. I remember years ago, I had a, a senior citizen in my church, my first church, that uh, was, uh, was addicted to cigarettes. Matter of fact, he'd been smoking for 50 years. And uh, his granddaughter made contact with me on Facebook and wanted me to tell some of the stories that I remembered about Grandpa. I remember when I talked him in to stop smoking after he'd been smoking 50 years. And see, I just told him, I said, you know, Jesus can help you. You don't have to keep doing that. He said, Oh, you don't know, said, uh, I've done this so many years. I said, I know it. But nothing's permanent. Just because you've been hooked on something for 50 years doesn't mean you can't quit and change. And uh, what happened was, with the help of God, he stopped. Back in those days, we'd have testimony time, and, you know, somebody would stand and give a testimony, and uh, uh, Brother W.P. Tucker, some of you remember, he'd hold his hand up and he'd say, still quit. <laughs> he wanted everybody to still quit that was one of the stories I passed along to the granddaughter about how he stopped smoking after 50 years and he stayed quit until later on he went to be with the Lord at an old age so nothing is permanent and some of us get in that niche and we think well you know I've been hooked on this or I've been addicted to this all these years, and I don't see how in the world I can change now. You probably can't, but I'm going to tell you, God in you can change anything. 
Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. The first word in verse 14 is that. Why were you and I redeemed from the curse of the law that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith? Praise God. Let's go back now into the Old Covenant. You can't appreciate this verse until you realize what you've been delivered or set free from. All the way back in the last book of the law, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, you hear people preach this today and try to apply it to our modern day. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, was not given for a believer. Thank you. Now, don't shout me down because we'll go teaching real good here. This is the book of the law. The book of the law was given to the Jews. It was not given to the Gentiles. The book of the law was not given for you and me as followers of Jesus Christ. But see, we need to know. We need to know what we have been set free from. Can you say amen? amen. Have you got your Bible? We'll just follow this verse by verse, word for word here, and really see what God has done in our life. Verse 1, it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now, there are conditions for all these blessings, and that condition is obedience. Obedience. Pick up verse 2, please. And all of these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So these blessings, according to this verse, will be abundant. They'll be so abundant that they, they will literally chase down the people of God. They'll just run up and overtake you. Glory to God. Verse 3. Blessed shall thy be in the city, and blessed shall thy be in the field. Location doesn't matter. The blessings will come. Going back, there are conditions. And the condition is obedience. Now, verse number 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, that's children. Blessed shall be your children. And the fruit of thy ground, that's the animals, your herds. The fruit of thy cattle and increase of thy kin and the flocks of thy sheep. So children are going to be blessed. Your crops are going to be blessed. And your herds are going to be blessed. Verse 5. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. The storehouse will be full. Praise God. Notice verse 6. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. And blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. That's verse number 6. There's no time limit on these blessings of God. They're coming and going. They're coming to you. Can you say amen? amen. Notice, if you will, verse 7. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Praise God. The Lord will fight your battles for you. Can you say amen? amen. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, in all thy sittest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So verse 8, when command comes from the Lord, there's nothing can stop God's command to bless you. Notice you will, verse 9, the Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in them. This is verse 9. Here again, the condition of obedience is put before the people. Do you see that? Verse 10. All the people of the earth shall see that thou art called 
by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. This is verse number 10. Folks will see, and they'll be able to recognize that God's blessing upon your life, and they'll be afraid of you. 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. So folks will see that uh, everything around you is very bountifully. Can you say amen? amen? Verse number 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. Glory to God. That sounds good. The heavens to give the rain and the land and seas, to bless all the work of thy hand. Thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Here, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. That means the treasure of heaven is open to you. I like Philippians 4, 19, but my God shall supply all you need according to his riches and glory. That's heaven's open for you. Can you say amen? amen? Verse number 13, the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearkenest unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do. Verse 13 again, obedience is set before the people of God. Verse 14, and thou shalt go aside, thou shalt not go aside any uh, from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Here, Israel was commanded to be faithful only unto the Lord. Now, all of these blessings, there's 14 verses here of what I would call declared blessings. These blessings were given only because of one thing. They were, listen to me very carefully, they were the result of the obedience of God's people as long as they obeyed the Lord. As long, look at verse, look at verse 1 again. This is how it opened to us. Look at verse 1. It shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now that sounds real good. But again, what's the conditions? Obedience. Obedience. And, listen, if you pay attention, if you were not obedient, you got into problem with the boss man in the sky. People who were not obedient, there was a result of that disobedience, and the result was the curse. Some of us don't really know how to appreciate the word of the Lord that came by the Apostle Paul when he said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. If there had been no redemption from the curse of the law, all of us in here tonight would be in a heck of a shape, I'll tell you that. Because we've not observed to do all the commandments of the Lord and all the things that he's spoken unto us. We've not totally and fully followed his voice in this earth. Are you with me? So what my goal is to help you to see that all of these blessings that we read in the first 14 verses... All of those blessings are ours today, not because we kept the law, not because we obeyed the word of the Lord, but simply because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ kept the commandments. He obeyed the word of the Lord. He did it all for us so the blessings could come on us. Amen. Dear Lord, dear Lord. Be careful who you listen to who will try to bring you back under the old covenant law and make you think unless you do A, B, and C, God doesn't do D. What's happening is you're frustrating the grace of God when you do that. Not only frustrating the grace of God, the Holy Spirit will stop working in your life. He can't help you as long as you go back in that direction under the law. We have people that just give me conflict everywhere I go because of teaching like this. Why can't we understand we've been redeemed? 
What have you been redeemed for? We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. We've been redeemed from the works of the law. We don't have to obey all of those laws that came out of the writings God gave Moses. That was to the Jew. It wasn't given to Vernon. It was given to the Jews. It wasn't given to the Gentiles. It was given to the Jews. It wasn't given to the believers. But just something happens when you get into verse 15. From verse 15 all the way to verse 68, there are curses. Isn't it am- does it amaze you? There were only 15 or 14 verses of blessings. But the curses go from verse 15 all the way to 68. The curse is far, far outnumber the blessings. Isn't that amazing? Now notice, if you will, verse 15. I'm not going to read this thing in entirety. Verse 15, it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us, the Gentiles, through Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, not through works. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He says in verse 16, Cursed you'll be in the city, and cursed you'll be in the field. Cursed shall be a basket in your store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, fruit of the land, increase of the kind, flocks of the sheep. Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. Just curse, 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 curse. You could just pick it up all the way down here. Verse 21, the Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until it has consumed thee from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. There are people today, you can't get healed. We can't get them healed. There are people today that just can't get healed. Why? They're out under the works of the law. They're still back there trying to please the Lord by doing something. And if they feel like if they don't please the Lord, then the curse comes on them. Well, you know, the Lord's cursed me because I've not been obedient to the Lord Well, you can't get people like that healed. They'll stay cursed and they'll die cursed. You can't help people. There's some people you can't help. I'll tell anybody, listen, if you want me to counsel you, if you give me six weeks, if you come to every service that I teach for six weeks, listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying through me to you, I'll guarantee you you'll never need another counselor. The Word of God will be your counselor. Once I can get you to see who God is, and I can get you to see who you are, and get you to see who's living inside of you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, and I can get you to see the life that you're living inside of you right now is not your life, it's the life of Christ. Once I get you to see that by the stripes of Jesus you have been totally healed, that God is your healer, Hallelujah. And this life you're living is a good life. It's a wonderful life. It's a blessed life. If I could just get people to see this kind of stuff. Don't stand around and argue with the Word of God. Just say yes to it. Glory to God. God can change things so quickly. (laughs) He goes on here. He just talks about all the way through here. The Lord will smite you with the consumption, fever, inflammation, extreme burning with the sword, with blasting, with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until you perish. This is mess. This is mess. This is old covenant religion. This is religion gone to the seed that millions of people in our nation tonight are still hearing from the pulpit. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for a new covenant. That's why you can't, this stuff doesn't mix You can't put new patches and old patches. You can't put new wine. It just doesn't mix, my brother, my sister. It doesn't mix. Whomsoever the Son sets free, they're free indeed. Free from what? Free from the works of the law and free from the curse of the law. Mm, 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 mm. 
27, the Lord will smite you with the blots of Egypt, with emrods, with scab, itch, <laughs> whereof thou canst not be healed. Did you see that? Canst not be healed. Boy, we need to learn something in the healing rooms, my brother and my sister. We need to discuss with people just a little bit, where are you living? Are you back there? Or are you up here with us? Are you living back under the law of Moses? Are you trying to observe to do all these laws that God gave Moses? Or have you moved into the land of grace? You can't get them healed until you get them into grace. I don't care how holy they are. I don't care how many days a week they fast. I don't care how much money they give to the Lord's work. You can't get a person healed until you get them out from under the works of the law. Law and grace do not mix. Period. Do not mix. This one, the Bible said, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Let's declare that freedom, blessed be God. Amen. Things that have you in bondage, deal with it. Say, bless God, it's not permanent. I'm coming out of this mess. I'm not leaving back there. No, no, no. I'm going into the land flowing with milk and honey. Can, you get a, can I get a witness? Somebody say amen. amen. Now I want to give you a verse. In Hebrews chapter 8, I wish, I'm not going to read, the, I dare you to read the rest of these 68 verses here. But I want to show you something that's happened in Hebrews chapter 8. Believers in the new covenant can claim these same promises. Whatever God promised the people of God in verses 1 through 14, we can claim those because of Jesus' work on the cross. Amen. A wonderful, or as wonderful as these uh, works are and these blessings are, the promise is more and better under the new covenant. Have you found the 8th chapter? <laughs> Let me find my verse. I think it's verse 6. It is 8-6. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. Would you say better covenant? Better covenant. One more time, please. Better covenant which was established upon better promises. Would you say better promises? better promises? Let me give you an interpretation of this verse. But now, since the cross, since the cross of Jesus, but now, has he, this is our Lord Jesus Christ, obtained a more excellent ministry. This ministry is the new covenant with the blood of Jesus, which is superior and takes place of the old covenant in animal blood. That's why it's a better covenant with better promises. We're not talking about the blood of a goat. We're talking about the blood of Jesus. It's a better covenant. But I'm telling you, if the blood of a bull or a goat can give all those blessings under the law of Moses, how much more? How much more? How much more? Shall the blood of Jesus in the new covenant bring us blessings from God? Amen. Glory to God. Get your nose, get your spout over here where the glory is coming out. Amen. Glory to God. I'll read this verse to you again, verse 8 or verse 6. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he's the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. i got to read verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there should be no place have been sought for the second. If there's a second, there must have been a first, and you can't have both, you got to choose. If you like the first better, go for it, Jack. I like the second better. Amen. Thank God for the land of grace. Can you say amen? Amen. Uh, Romans chapter 8, 2, I quote it to you, but make a note of it if you don't know it yet. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. 
Remember I was asking you, what, what have you been set free from? You've been set free from the works of the law. You've been set free from the curse of the law. That means when you miss it, the curse doesn't come on you. I don't know about you, but I'm going to drink to that. That is good news right there. Mm. Amen. When you miss it, the curse doesn't come on you because the curse went on Jesus. We've been redeemed from that curse. Can you say amen? amen. Romans 6, 18 says, Being then made free from sin, you became the servant of righteousness. We've been made free from sin. Sin has no power over you. Sin's history. He who knew no sin, he became sin for us. Why? That we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's amazing how people get hung up on sin today, especially in their thinking. And then they wonder why they get sick. Sickness comes. You know what disease is? Dis-ease. Dis slash ease. When you get dis-ease in your mind, in your thinking, that opens the door for disease to come into your body. Oh, Lord, I'll leave that alone right there. Romans 6.22 says, Now, being made free from sin and become servants of God, you have fruit unto holiness and life everlasting. We say, Pastor, what am I free from? You're free from the curse of the law. Curse of the law, that means that you're free from sickness, from poverty, and spiritual death. I got a whole list of things here. Free from condemnation. Free from sin and its penalty. Free to be all that God meant for you to be. Free from the power of darkness. Free from my past failures. Glory to God. Free from lack. Free from oppression. Free to drink the water of the life found from the fountain freely. Free to know what to hold on to and what to let go of. <laughs> free to know what to bind or permit affirm or allow and free to know what to loose what to forbid what to deny what to say no to we're going to teach you those things in the next few days I want to talk to you about those kind of prayer the prayer of denial there's some things you shouldn't even allow in your life just deny it deny it having any power over you it's called the prayer of denial that's not a river down some Egypt somewhere the prayer of denial you need to learn how to deny things just Hey, bind it. Bind it. Why do you think he gave you the keys to the kingdom? Bind those things. Say, no. I know I feel, ah, oh, we don't go by our feelings. Just bind this mess that tries to come against us and tries to attach itself to us. It, we need to know what to hold on to and we need to know what to let go of. God doesn't mean for you to hold on to everything that comes your way. There's some things you need to turn loose of. There's some things you just need to lay aside. You need to know what to bind. And the word bind means to, uh, to, uh, what? We need to know what to bind. And we need to know what to lose. Thank you, Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. I think there's some things that will help you get free and stay free. You see, just think about the teachings that you should have gotten last Lord's Day. Get the tape. Thank God for CDs. Get the tape. And things like this. We hit it quick. And we hit it running. And Barb says, I go too fast. Leave people behind. But see, that's why God gave us CD tapes. You got all week to catch up. Can you say amen? amen. So, why don't you just declare right now, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. God's going before me. God's going before me. To bless me. To bless me. To prosper me. And to do me good. God will never leave me alone. God will never fight. Uh, God will always fight my battles for me. You have wrestled. And you've prevailed. God lives in your body. Amen. Say God lives in my body. God is a good God. God is the source of your life. God will never leave you. Your past failures will never hold you back. God's abundant favor is yours. 
No weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. My God is the supplier of all my need. I will do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I just want to tell you, if God be for me, who can be against me? Jesus is the source of your life. He says, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I was listening to Glory Copeland today. She made a reference to John 10.10. 10. I didn't read all the verse. Because I'm going to tell you something, my brother and my sister. The whole verse says, the thief has come to steal, to kill, and destroy. And she said today, I have it on tape, that that's Satan. That's a lie out of hell. You hear what I just said? That is a lie out of hell. The devil does not have the power to steal, kill, or destroy you. Jesus stripped him of that in Hebrews chapter 2, 14. He destroyed him that had the power of the devil. So what happens is that people hear that and they begin to empower devils. They begin to empower devils. That whole chapter, chapter 10, I double dare you to check it out. Chapter 10 of John's gospel, the Satan is not mentioned one time. It's not the devil that steals and kills and destroys. It's false shepherds. False shepherds. They steal sheep. They destroy and devour sheep. Satan is not mentioned. Every faith teacher in America will tell you that's Satan. So what we're doing, we're always fighting devils. Why do you want to fight someone that's over there in a wheelchair, strapped down, totally paralyzed, and totally defeated? Leave the dude alone. Jesus whipped him for you. Pick on a handicapped devil. Brag about what Jesus did. Leave devils alone. They have no power over you. If the devil could kill us, nobody would be alive in this place tonight. Well, he, he, you know, he's come to steal, to kill, and destroy. No, he hasn't come to steal and kill and destroy me, bless God. Amen. See, the truth will set you free. Amen. The truth you know. So I dare you, read John chapter 10, and you find the devil in that. Anywhere in that chapter 10, tell me about it, and I'll apologize on TV for saying that's a lie that come out of hell. And I don't care where it's coming through, Gore, Clopin, Vernon Moore, who it's coming from. If anybody tells you that John 10.10 10 is talking about the devil, it's a lie. It's a lie. All this political correctness, just tell it like it is. It's a lie. Right. But what it does, it empowers Satan. It gives him the power that Jesus stole from him. Just like he did Adam. He's stealing authority away from you like he stole it away from Adam. And he'll turn that around and use it on you. God Almighty, I'm somebody. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's what false shepherds do out of John 10, 10, the whole chapter. But Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and they might have it more abundant. Let's jump on that part of it. Forget about the false shepherds. You don't have one of those. Let's talk about the life that comes from Jesus. Life, the zoe, the God kind of life. It's abundant life. It's life that's beyond the ordinary. It's life of no lack. Can you see me? Amen. <laughs> Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus is the source of my life. Amen. Can I say one other thing and I'm finished? Jesus is the source my faith. 
If you have anything other than the King James Version on this verse, can you flip it back up, Galatians 2, 20 for me, please? I want to show you how you screw a verse up real quick. All you got to do is, is change one word. Okay? Can I show you how you do that? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I live now in the flesh, I live by the faith, oh, back it up, by the faith of, by the faith of. You see that word of? Look in your translation and see if it don't say in. If you have anything other than the King James Version, he'll say in. Let me be the first to tell you, my brother, my sister, there's a lot of difference between leaving the faith of God and faith in God. I can say, do you see it, my brother? He that has eyes to see, let him see. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I want to read it to you one more time. I want you to see how doctrines of devils have inflated and infiltrated into the church to steal the word of the Lord and the truth of God. Truth is the only thing that will set you free. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, watch, not I. And this is where I get this part. Of my life comes from Jesus. But Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Not faith in the Son of God. Faith of the Son of God. Give me an NIV version. Can you flip it quick enough now so the difference in this verse, if you can't, that'll be okay. Anybody have a different translation that would, would read in? What well, it says what? In. See there, in. See, even the new king gang drinks. How do you know that, Pastor? Bless God, I majored in this stuff in college. I am a professional. I know some of this stuff. Why do you think I spent years and years and years of studying and pulling my hair out, taking Hebrew and Greek, trying to learn something about God's Word? This is the biggie. Because if I'm living by faith in, see, in the Son of God, that means that faith comes out of me, something I'm manufacturing here. I have faith in the Son of God. No, my faith came from God. It's God's kind of faith in me. Just like it's God's kind of life in me, it's God's kind of faith in me, it's God's kind of love in me. That's why I love, that's why I have faith, that's why I'm alive. He's in me, blessed be God. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. God, I might about to preach myself happy. You know? I just hate to hear something taught that I know is deceiving the people of God. It burns me up. My wife and I were riding down the road, somebody said something. I said, I forgot my window was up. Spit all over my window, tried to, had to clean it up because they said something I knew that wasn't right with the Word of God. You can get too smart, I guess you know that. You can get too smart and just get to where you can see flaws here. We all are flawed. We all are flawed. I sure don't know it all, but there's a few things I've learned the hard way on my knees before God, seeking truth, seeking truth, seeking truth. I'll do a funeral for a young man here in the next few years if I outlive him. And he and I in the same boat, we've always been a seeker of truth. He lives in Spartanburg. We've always been a seeker of truth. Seeker of truth. I still am seeking truth. You know why? That's the only thing that will set you free. Religious teachings and doctrines of devils will not set you free. That's why just don't, just don't accept anything you hear. That's why I tell you stuff. Check it out. Check it out. I told you I dare you to go through John 10, 10, or John chapter 10, and try to find anywhere where it makes a reference to Satan. But yet they're always giving Satan all this great power. Well, the devil made me sick. Corn, where did he get sickness from? Jesus took all that away from him. 
What do you think we've been redeemed from? Oh, I see. I might as well go to the house. I might as well go to the house. Thank you, Lord, for the word of the Lord. Bring forth your word into the hearts of these, your people. Stir our hearts, O Lord. Jesus, you said, if the Son sets you free, he'll be free indeed. But you also said the truth that we know shall make us free. I pray for a church filled with free people who know the word of the Lord. Anything, Lord, in this place tonight that hinders us or holds us back, I pray in Jesus' name that we will just cast it away from us. We'll cast it out of our thinking. We'll say, no, 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 no. I bind that. No, no, no. I deny it's right to come into my body and live in my being. In Jesus' name, amen. You say, Pastor, don't you ever have an opportunity to get sick? Oh, yeah. But just because something tries to come to you, you can deny it. Don't sign for it. Don't claim it as your own. Just deny it. We'll talk about that kind of prayer that says no to stuff. That's part of the keys of the kingdom, you know. Just say no. Who was that years ago? Say no to drugs. Uh, you know who that was? I bet you don't know about Nancy Reagan came up with that. Just say no to drugs. Just say no. Well, you don't. Just say no. That word has mighty power. Just say no. No, thank you. Fish are not biting today. Can you say? Did you learn anything tonight? Did anything stir you just a little bit? Did, did it cause you to go home and want to plow into this a little bit more? Hallelujah. Then please stand with me and uh, we're going to receive an offering in the name of the Lord. And... Uh, Yeah, Jesus said, all the people who came before me were thieves and robbers. The sheep did not listen to them. See, it's the people. But look at that one word in verse 10. I changed everything. A thief comes to steal and kill and destroy, but I came to give life. Life in all. A huh? thief. Huh? Yeah, a thief. A thief. A thief. Yeah, a thief came, comes to steal. Yeah, the thief, the people. It's not devils. It's people. Of course, the devils can be working in people, but people. People, don't empower, don't ever say the devil made me sick. Don't give the devil power. Bless God if he did. Don't accredit him with that. Don't give him credit for any, don't ever let him think he's winning. Come on, church. Don't ever let him think he's winning. <laughs> Can I say amen, mama? Whew, yeah, glory to God. Take mama home with you tonight and let her pray over you before you go to bed. She'll get the devils off of you. <laughs> Are we okay? Everybody get the offering? Now, tomorrow night, if I were to read a scripture to you, any man being Christ, he's a new creation. What in the world would that mean to you? Oh, how we've missed that one, my brother, my sister. How we've missed that one. A new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. A new creation. Jesus was the first one born from the dead. We, he started a brand new creation that never existed before. It bothers people when I tell them I don't believe in original sin and tell them I don't believe in the blood of the atoning death of Jesus Christ provides healing for us. Healing was available long before the death of Christ. In this new creation, there should be no sickness. Why do you need to get atoned for something that shouldn't even exist? We're a new creation. I said we are a new creation. New creation. Right after the Jesus, he started this new creation. Redeemed from the curse of the law. Redeemed from sin. Redeemed from sin and sickness and disease. We should live a wonderful life. Abundant life. My brother or sister, we've got goofed up and listened to the wrong crowd somewhere. 
They got us in this line over here called stupid. My daughter said, you can't help stupid. 